G'day legends. In this video, I am going to be judging a surf photo competition. So the guys at Surf Photo Mate, which is a platform that helps surf photographers sell their photos to surfers, have set up a competition over Christmas 2023 uh, for the best photographer and they have got me to judge it. I've got a fair few submissions. I've nailed it down to 12 and I'm going to go through them with you right now. I'm going to point out why certain photos have got in the top 12 and then some a little bit of con constructive criticism to help with uh, you know getting those photos a little bit better. So I think everyone can take on, a bo on board some of um, yeah, this feedback on the photos. So hopefully it's enjoyable for you. The winner actually gets a Aquatech housing, like a brand new Aquatech housing from Aquatech. It's a company that I have, I've used for over 20 years now to protect my cameras and not once have they leaked. So I am very loyal to this brand. They have actually partnered with me. So if you ever want Aquatech housing, I can get you 5% off with the code word TOMW. So T-O-M-W. That'll get you 5% off during their sales or when they're not on sale, any time of the year, every day of the year. If you use that code, you'll get a little bit extra and be helping out the channel as well. So before I get into it, I just want to let you know that I do run surf photography courses and i've got a free 40 minute trainings for water and surf photography so if you're interested in that um, i'll put the links below and you can join up get instant and free access answers the five most asked questions with water photography so let's get into it the top 12. just before i start i'm going to let you know my criteria so i wasn't necessarily judging the highest end surf action there's stuff that's been left out of this top 12 that had incredible action they've framed the right moment and everything like that but I've so as it's a photography competition and not necessarily best surfing done in a photo or best surf photo it's more of the best photography photo so I have uh, incorporated that into uh, nailing down my top 12 pictures so uh, just to get that in mind it's going to be, obviously, everyone's going to pick a different top 12 and, and different eventual winner. But I should go through uh, with much clarity. The second thing I'll be looking at is how technically advanced the photo is, whether they've executed perfect focus, exposure, used the correct lens, got a good composition, that sort of thing. Those things come strongly into how I've picked this top 12. Um, also, the post-editing to a degree, a small degree on the post-editing whether that was done uh, well. But overall, it's the feeling that a photo can evoke because we take photos to make people feel, well, I do anyway, so I can take that from my perspective. But it's, if you can get someone to feel an emotion or feel a stoke or move someone to either go surfing or take a photo or jump in the water or go on a holiday or anything like that, that uh, motivation is a strong factor in how I've judged this competition. So if you've got feeling, you're probably going to be in this top 12 in your photo and technical brilliance and all those other things. Anyway, I've raved on enough. Let's go into the one that finished 12. First up, we've got this really cool aerial. So whoever's the photographer on this one has nailed um, absolute peak of the moment he's probably got at the highest point of that aerial it's got the fella on the shoulder overlooking it which sort of brings your eye back in because he's looking at the subject I like the reason why I've included this one in the top 12 is because a lot of people when they're doing surf photography from the land so this is shot with a long lens from the land um, they get too much foreground water which is uninteresting he's lifted the camera Probably a little bit too much. Could have got a little bit more at the bottom of the wave. But I like how he's included more sky than foreground water. So I gave props to that. The picture is slightly off focus. So he's missed focus just by a little bit. So that's probably why it it's, uh, hasn't gone higher than 12th place. But uh, yeah, he's got a nice clean clean edit there. I like how the surfers um, matched against a clean sky as well. Okay, so number 11 is a heavy wave. It's uh, a reef wave. It's not easy to swim out with a camera when the waves are like this. So uh, giving massive props to this this guy or girl who took this picture of the bodyboarder. It is number 11 because it's technically not perfect. So 
Um, I think he's focused it. If we go in at hundred percent, I mean, I haven't got the full res file here, but you can see that I think the focus is on, but it's got a quite hay, so it's a bit fuzzy. And that I'm pretty hundred percent sure is a lens port issue. So he's probably shooting through, or she's probably shooting through a flat port, and it's hard to get that technique right. So um, a little bit more practice with getting your flat port technique right. Once again, in my free course, I go through how to keep a clean flat port so you get crisp photos every time. There is people spitting on their flat ports and you will never get a super crisp photo if you spit on your flat port. Some will turn out all right, but, um, you know, some, uh, a lot don't. So uh, using these two techniques, three techniques that I have in my free course will get you over the hump with the... Um, with the unclear photos through a flat pour, also he's concluded probably a little bit too much foreground water, like um, all this is wasted space to my eye. Okay, coming in at number 10 is another water photo, and it's taken in a place that, I don't know, I, maybe I've got a bit of sentimental to this one, because I've got a feeling this is a, this is a wave that I used to surf a lot five years ago. They've got the fella in the barrel, so he's going to be stoked. Surfer's going to be stoked, and if the surfer's spoke, stoked, it's a, it's a good photo. So that's why it's come into the top 12. There's a few issues with this photo. The color balance is a little bit too cyan. Um, I would have liked him to be a little bit more inside, so not swimming off to the shoulder, but really squaring up. I know it's easier said than done, but uh, that's one thing I would have liked to have looked for. So the framing's a little bit off um, and the positioning's just a little bit off to get that hero shot. If it was a little bit further inside, the, the wave would have ca carried over him a little bit more, but you know, you just got to take it where you're at. So good well done on this photo and congratulations getting into the top 12. Okay, coming in at number nine is this photo and I'm giving props to this photo because another criteria that I've got for this competition is a thought process and I, I feel like the photographer had some sort of thought, thought process to this, not just recording um, a surfer doing a move or getting in the barrel or doing an aerial. He's He or she is thinking about some other elements so they've included a foreground here so if you've got a out of focus foreground mid ground and then a background well then it adds layers to the photos he hasn't been really got a background here but he's got a foreground that leads into the picture so it makes the uh, surfer look a little bit more sharper it gives him a bit of context uh, things that i would probably the reason why i didn't go much higher than number nine or ten is the wave face i mean you can't help that on that particular set but it's all a little bit frothy. If that was cleaner, that would have been a cleaner looking, more appealing looking wave. So look for the waves that uh, don't have the froth up it. And um, But other than that, done a pretty good job technically and yeah, thinking about stuff. So that's why it made the top 12. So well done for getting in. Okay, number eight is a water shot. Nice, clean, airy sort of look. Uh, the only thing why this one didn't go higher, I think technically it's pretty good. The framing is not quite right for me. And the lip is going off out of the top of the frame. There's a little bit of stuff. Uh, you could have lifted the camera up once again. I, I like having the lip, the top of the lip in the frame if possible. It's a little bit sort of slanted as well, but the action's there, but the little crumbly white water here sort of like you know, it doesn't do it any favors as well. Would have been cleaner if that wasn't coming down. Not that you can help what happens out there, but uh, just as far as a, you know, a better looking photo, aesthetically looking photo, but including the top of the wave would have helped this one. Okay, coming in at number seven, we've got a golden light shot and the first one, I think, of the 12. And this time of day is where just everything feels so much better in my eyes. I love the morning or afternoon golden light and he's nailed, they've nailed exposure here pretty well. It's a tough one. The reason why it hasn't gone higher is because that big blob of white sun sort of just pulls, like the brightest part gets pulled, uh, your eye gets pulled to that part rather than the surfer. So it's sort of competing um, that bright blob. So I think it would have been a better photo if it was a bit earlier in the day and the sun was behind the wave and then it wouldn't have like just taken up so much of the sky, but done well to get the peak of the action. Uh, the surfing looks good and yeah, well done for getting into the uh, top 12.
Okay, number six, we're getting down to the pointy end of the draw, and it's a beautiful longboard picture taken from the water again. I like that going across across the photographer uh, look. I use it a lot myself. I love backlighting, so I'm really digging this picture. Um, it's really clean and minimalist. There's nothing much getting in the way. It's the surfer, it's the wave, it's a clean, clean blue, clear sky. And uh, the silhouette looks pretty cool. So not much to fold here. It's looking uh, from the low res image that I've been supplied. Or it's not that low res, but it looks super clean and crisp. He's got the lens port. I've got the lens port nice and clean. Uh, it's in focus. I love composing the surfer on one side of the frame and seeing what's ahead of them. So uh, it done really well here. Probably could have moved the surfer a little bit more into the middle. Probably stuck on the edge a touch, but, uh, you know, that's small criticism. Um, you know, this one could have gone higher in the draw, really. It's 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 a really good picture. So I'm rating it, and uh, congratulations on a really good capture, whoever this was. Okay, we're up to number five, getting to the top three. I think the top three get prizes. I know um, first prize is an Aquatech housing, but the uh, runner-up and number three get prizes as well, but... Just missing out is number five, but, you know, super good props. I love this photo. It's the in-between moment, so not the obvious surf action photo that pretty much most have sent in, which I like. It's this, I know, this just reminds me of paddling out at, I know, one of the big point breaks on a big day and just, like, settling, settling at the top of the set and just watching the first one go through and just looking over it and, uh, seen the lay of the land so I got a feeling and uh, the black and white does does help with that feeling so I like the fact that you've done it black and white even though there's a plenty of sun around and it's that just that feeling I I really love it and I could have probably gone higher with this one as well but um, yeah props for do, not doing the just the most sending in the most obvious picture Okay, and we are up to number four, just missing out on the prizes, but like, it's a great shot. It's another black and white shot, but it's got some style, this picture. It's style from the photographer, style from the surfer, and it's just like a really cool minimalist shot. I love like the white sky, the, the surfer with the black wetsuit, um, really contrasting against that white sky. The uh, drop knee cutback. And yeah, not much I can fold about this picture. It looks nice and sharp and edited pretty well. So look, it probably would have gone maybe one or two spots higher, probably two spots higher if the wave just looked glassy clean or something like that. It would have been extra special then. Not something you can help on the day, but I'm just saying what, what makes that photo go from like, you know, 90% to a hundred percent, uh, is probably just that little bit, but, um, yeah, really loving this picture and well deserving of getting into the top 12. Okay, folks, we've hit the top three and this photo here is my third pick as the best picture that was sent in for this photo competition. Only lineup shot. Couldn't believe it. Like these pullback photos of an empty lineup is what gets a surfer stoked and it's what got me into surfing to start with is pictures like this lineups that just got my imagination going uh to become a surfer and then i saw the effects of what surfing magazines happened on me and then i got into photography and started taking my own surf photos and uh, this one just screams adventure to me he's got the land cruiser pulled up in front of a perfectly peeling little right hander and just makes me want to go surfing um, so yeah, composition's nailed. It's thought about the photo, it just hasn't rocked up and shot the right hander. He's got a bit of foliage. He's used a car to frame it. I mean, he could have even got down lower and actually shot through the bull bar and had the wave coming through the bull bar and he may have done that or she may have done that, but really digging this photo. It's got me wanting to go surfing, so that's why it's made the top three and I believe the number three position gets a prize. So congratulations. Okay, we're getting real close now. Number two coming up, second prize winner, and racking shot on a exceptional day. This would have been hard to swim, I reckon. Um, got a feeling I know the location of this one. Not 100% sure, but if it's the location I'm thinking of, really hard place to swim and get a photo. I mean, even if it's that size, 
and barreling off a headland, it's normally a pretty hard swim. So massive props to get out there, get yourself in the position, nail focus, and then get a pretty good composition as well. It's got the headland in the background. I like the sort of out of focus foreground. It's sort of cutting off the surfboard, but like peeping through the barrel and just that, that epic looking uh, barrel is probably the best looking wave in the whole of the, um, on all of the 70 or 80 odd submissions that we got. So um, I'm loving it. A few things I would have changed. The color balance isn't quite right. So I'll just show you um, on the screen how I would have changed it. So I bring up color balance. It's a little bit cyan, so I would have pushed a little bit more red into it. Um, but more than anything, the cameras sometimes do this, or you might may have done this in post, but uh, when you bring up shadow areas, uh, it can sometimes oversaturate greens and yellows. This looks like green, but if you, I've gone into hue and saturation here in Photoshop, and if you just choose the yellow channel and you pump up the saturation, you can see all that greenery there is... Um, is actually the yellow channel. And when that happens, sometimes it happens just off the camera, it's good to just pull it back a bit because that saturation was just drawing, drawing my eye off the surfer. So I like to pull that back a bit and might even see where the greens are showing up and the greens are showing up in a similar area. So pulling the saturation back sometimes can uh, help an image out. So, um, yeah, so if we just look at the before and after, it's just subtle, but it just like takes that sort of highlightness off the hill. I could have done a lot more in Lightroom with selecting the area, selecting the surfer, doing that. But yeah, just having a little think about the color balance. Uh, it might ne not necessarily, the photographer might not necessarily oversaturate. It's just like when you bring out shadow areas, sometimes certain cameras can oversaturate but really good photo, props for swimming it, props for getting the action, and I bet that surfer is super stoked, and it's probably got that one hanging on the wall. Okay, so give us a drum roll, because we're now we're going to announce the eventual winner of the Surf Photo Mate competition that wins an Aquatech housing. They're going to be super stoked. Whoever they are, they've produced a photo that has amazing feeling. And I think feeling gets to the core of why we love surf photos, what makes us want to go surfing, what got us into surfing, what makes us feel like a, reminds us of a session that we've had or a moment we've had. And the eventual winner is this one here. It's a black and white photo from the water. I've looked at the specs and uh, in the metadata and it's shot with a 50 mil lens. Uh, which is one of my favorite lengths for water photography. It's just got, it's not an epic wave. It's probably only a two foot wave, if that. But the surfer is engaged with his craft. He's got that thing on rail. He's speeding. He's got the hand brushing along the water. I can almost feel myself surfing my wide Simmons board and coming, coming around off that wave myself. The photograph is super sharp he's like nailed focus the lens port is super clear not going to get that clear lens port without um, knowing the right techniques so uh, whoever took this photo has got that down for this session anyway and I like the edit the edit's pretty good the, the sky is a nice minimalist sort of color there's nothing competing with this photo uh, the composition is just centered but it just feels right for this particular image and uh, they're not doing an amazing turn but once again he's technically they've technically nailed focus nailed exposure done a good edit provided a feeling and um you know as a surf photo uh photographer they have used this moment they might not have had perfect pumping pipeline but they've used this moment to uh, capture a photo that had feeling and they used the conditions that they had on the day. So that's when I think a surf photographer really comes, um, you know, up a level and produces something good when it's not perfect pipeline. Like anyone can go to the Mentawis and uh, get a great photo because it's like almost impossible not to, but uh, getting a photo on an overcast morning that uh you know is like one foot or something like that on your local beach brush or wherever they took this photo 
uh, you know, that's when it's harder to do. So they produced this and they produced a, a photo with feeling. So like I said at the start, it's not necessarily the best wave winds or the best air or the best maneuver. It's uh, sometimes about evoking a feeling and then technically being able to follow through with that. So that's the reason why I've picked this one as the winner of the Surf Photo Mate competition. Uh, very honored that uh, the guys there got me to uh, judge it and I uh, had, really, had a really good time looking through them. Everyone can't be a winner, but I think you all are winners by taking surf photos because taking surf photography is one of the raddest things that you can do with your time. Apart from surfing, that's even radder. But surf photography is like up there. Equal. What do you reckon? Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully you got something out of that. And uh, yeah, please reach out with any suggestions, any thoughts on that process. And uh, yeah, love to connect. You can always find me on my YouTube channel, my Instagram. And um, yeah, always happy to talk water and surf photography with anyone that's keen. You'll